Hello, I'm Daniela. In today's video, we're going to discuss the benefits of working in a series, and I'm going to show you the current series that I'm working on. So the benefit of working in a series, now well, let's, let's backtrack a little and define what working on a series is. So working on a series is having dedicated time, and it can be any amount of time that you want to dedicate. It can be a year, a lifetime, or even just a few weeks where you're working on a particular either technique or subject. In this case, I'm working on the golden pothos plant. Now this is kind of an interesting plant because typically in many areas it's a house plant and it's a hard to kill house plant, which is very good for me. When I lived up north, the area was very cold, New England, and so a lot of house plants have to be able to be hardy even inside the house. I did not have a lot of luck with houseplants, particularly the ones that I wanted to grow, the tropical kinds. But I did have luck with this plant. So it goes by many names. It's called the golden pothos. It has beautiful heart-shaped leaves, and they can vary from being solid green to variegated to having gold or yellow or white inside the leaves. They're quite beautiful. When they're happy, they create a vine that can grow up walls and around posts particularly inside the house, so you can actually make a topiary out of it if you wanted. It's a really pretty plant. It's also very hard to kill. Jackpot. <laughs> when I moved to Florida, though, this plant grows outdoors, so that was really fascinating to me. Some of the locals just see that as normal, but I am really intrigued by that. So this is the subject of my series. So I took some video on my yard of the golden pothos plant and how beautiful it looked and how the vines kind of overtook other plants. They like to crawl up, they like to crawl up trees and even the house. We had to put a stop to that. So I continued in my journey and I took a picture of the leaf. I really studied the leaf. It was heart shaped and it was beautiful. And just at a quick glance, all the leaves were different shapes, all different hearts. Some had points, some didn't, some were fat, some were long. And I love this variation. And it looked like something that really appealed to me, something that I could really master. So I started doing a colored pencil sketch. Now my colored pencil sketch was just a sketch to really capture the greens and just the jungle-like atmosphere. In fact, we call that area of the house the jungle. So I did this drawing and I really enjoyed the process and through the process of making the drawing, I kind of took advantage of the shapes and the greens and I really enjoyed that. I didn't really want to continue with my drawings. You can if you want and in a series I encourage you to just follow your instincts. But from there, I decided I wanted to do some watercolor. So I made a couple of watercolor shorts showing my work and I'll give you those links below. I love working with watercolor. I think it's just so beautiful and it's very unexpected. It took me a while to really appreciate that unexpected nature. It's totally different than working with standard paints, acrylics or oils, where you place that paint exactly where you want it. In time, you learn to master the ability to use water to move the watercolor. Now it's still unpredictable, but you can kind of get an idea of what might happen. That's what makes watercolor exciting. I also like the transparency and the vibrancy of using watercolor, particularly with certain watercolors and if you use enough of them. So after I made my watercolors, I was kind of happy that I worked through that medium. So then I decided to take out my acrylic paints and work on the golden pothos plant, creating some images using the acrylic paints, the heart shaped and the green leaves. And while I was painting this and really enjoying the process, I decided, well, I was getting kind of sick of using the green. So I threw in some unexpected colors. I have some pinks and some blues. And where they combined, there's like a little hint of purple. I added some greens and then I added some whites and I was really pleased with the result. Now I wasn't done with acrylics yet. So I got out a much larger canvas, 24 by 30. And I really started to have fun with this. Instead of making the perfect hearts, I made hearts that kind of turned and twisted and did interesting things, just like the plants do. It wasn't necessarily an intentional thought. When I made my sketch, I didn't say, I want a ruffled edge on this heart. I just kind of let it happen. I was really interested in the process. I was enjoying it as I went, and I was kind of curious to see where it would go. Now, acrylic is forgiving. It's not so much that you can remove the paint, 
although you can when it's still wet. But the beauty of acrylics is once it dries solid, you can paint over it. So acrylics are very forgiving for me. If I'm not really pleased with something, I can save the canvas and paint over it at another date. And so in the back of my mind, that's what I thought. Well, if this doesn't work out, I'll just paint over it. But it turned out that I love the results. I'm having a frame made for this painting, and I can't wait to hang it up. Now, through the course of the Golden Pothos study, I learned a few things that were intriguing. Aside from it being so hardy, it's kind of toxic to cats and dogs, which is the case with a lot of plants. But it's also an irritant to humans. So if you touch it, you should definitely wash your hands. This was good to know. Through the course of this, I decided, you know, I wasn't really done with my exploration. So my series continued. I pulled out my fabric. Now these heart-shaped leaves were perfect for making a fabric leaf. I went to town. I added stitches and stitches and more stitches. I added the shapes. I wanted a three-dimensional stem. And I continued until I had the result that I wanted. And I loved it. I showed it to my father-in-law who looked at it and said, wow, that looks like a real leaf. That was the highest compliment I could be paid. So I was so pleased with this work. I enjoyed the series. I learned a lot more about the technical facts of the Golden Pothos plant, but I also learned more about my art process and what really works for me. So what works for me, the big thing I have to remember is to trust my instincts. Not everything that I create will be satisfactory. That's okay. I can work through it. I also like to work in various mediums. I like to use fabric, watercolor, acrylic, colored pencil, and some days I hope to combine them as well. But for now, this was a very rewarding process. Some people like to stick to just one medium. They'll want to do their entire series in colored pencils, say, or acrylics, and that's perfectly acceptable. You do what works for you, and that's how you'll grow as an artist. So, Creating this series was also very beneficial because I wanted to really focus on that textile heart. To that end, I have a workshop coming up that shows how to make that textile tropical leaf, that fabric golden pothos plant. It's a three-part workshop that I hope you'll join me for. It's very easy to do. It just has a lot of repetition, a lot of the same stitches. And this is what makes that leaf come to life. So I'll be posting that in the upcoming days, and I hope you'll join me. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.